Hi, I'm Michael Wildenstein. I'm doing a segment on alumophobic, meaning if you have an issue with working with aluminum because you're afraid of what you might do to it, which is completely reasonable, I'm going to try to help you out and taking that fear away so that you're more comfortable working with aluminum. This is an expensive shoe. There's no way around it. But you need to be able to shape this to the individual horse's hoof, and sometimes it requires heat. A lot of the shoes we build for therapeutic reasons are very thick or very wide, and we do that to change the reactions of the hoof to the ground. They may be very thick to get more mechanics out of the rollover mechanism built within the shoe. They may be wider on one side than another, like a sideways shoe, in order to float one side of the hoof so it doesn't sink so far into the environment, narrow the other side so it sinks a little further for a horse, say, with a collateral ligament injury on the side that's wider. The reason we use aluminum is because we don't change the weight that much when we change the dimensions of the material. If we were to build some of these shoes out of steel, they would be very heavy creating a lot more fatigue to the horse. When we're shaping these shoes, a lot of it can be done cold on some shoes like this one that's not very thick. If we have a thicker shoe, it becomes very difficult. You can heat those shoes and modify them in the forge. The thing about aluminum is it melts at a relatively low temperature, 1,218 degrees, will make this expensive shoe a puddle in your forge. I have a few ways of defining the heat of the aluminum shoe. One is I can put some soap on it. I have temperature sticks. This one is for 900 degrees. Our aluminum melts at 1218 degrees, so this gives us an idea of where we're at by putting that mark on. Then I have a piece of paper or paper towel. I can burn that. Keep in mind while we're working on this shoe or cutting materials, preparing ourselves to do the, the welding or the shaping of the shoe, as we're standing here that forge is getting hotter and hotter. So if it takes 30 seconds when we first start out to heat the shoe to our critical temperature, then 10 minutes along it may only take 10 seconds. Also because re aluminum retains heat. It retains heat for a long time. It stays hot for a long time. So you have to be very careful how many times you repeatedly put it in there. And you have to be very careful you aren't creating hot spots in one area and a cold shoe in another. Because that could be a situation where you end up with half a shoe. I attended an agricultural fair where there was all kinds of booths and demonstrations. And there was a man there with beer cans and he'd poke an all hole in a can and then using his torch and rod, he'd fill that hole up. I thought that was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. Because all too often, I had been out to a client's horse, decided that they needed bar shoes, or it was suggested by the veterinarian that they needed bar shoes, and I went to shape my bar shoes for that horse. And unfortunately, they melted in the forge. It meant for another drive back to the place, and. and uh, a lot of explaining what happened to that shoe, that expensive shoe. Anyway, this man was welding holes up in beer cans, and so I bought his products and I went home, had to go buy some cans of beer, and I could drink them so that I could use the empties to poke holes in them and then weld them shut. Well, it didn't work out for me. Running that torch around there, I just melted the cans all up, then I'd have to drink another beer to weld up another hole, and. You know what, it just went downhill from there. A few simple techniques that I, if I had paid attention, I may have been able to weld those holes up without destroying all those beer cans. So let's look at some of the ways in which I'm going to define the heat of the shoe. Remember that uh, melting temperature is 1,218 degrees. Anything beyond that, we no longer have a shoe. Placing that shoe in the forge, I'll put a piece of paper on the anvil. Paper towel, paper, tissue, it all works. And it will help us define the critical temperature of that shoe. 
And while I have that in there, I'm counting. I'm going to put it in there for about 30 seconds and then I want to check it. It changes very quickly from a beautiful expensive shoe to a pile of molten expensive aluminum. If you have a hot spot in your forge, be sure and move your shoe around so that you're heating the shoe more evenly. My soap mark is a darker, darker brown, and now I've been burning the paper. At this point, I can do my forging. I can change the shape of that shoe, make modifications to it. Remember that that aluminum retains heat for a long time, so we can get a lot of modifications done. Another thing, aluminum does not forgive, meaning if you have mishammer marks, it's going to show up for a long time. So focusing on your hammering is very important. If I need at this point to pritchel the nail holes on the shoe or put new nail holes in, I can at this time. Remember to use soap on your pritchel or on your creaser or on your four punches so that your steel does not stick to your aluminum. I've pritchled the nail holes and say I want to increase the width of web on one side of the shoe. I can do that by heating up that side. I can use the soap to help me define my temperature. I can use the paper. It still has a great deal of heat in there, so we have to be careful how long we set that shoe in the forward. See the difference in color with the soap. It's just starting to burn the paper. I've waxed the creaser. By running that crease in the shoe, I've increased the width of web on that side. Say if a horse has a collateral ligament injury on this side of the hoof, I would want to increase the width of web. By increasing the width of web, I'm allowing this side to sink in more, this side to sink in less. I'm preventing elongation of the soft tissue, the collateral ligament, on that side of the foot. I can re further reduce this with the web in order to give this greater mechanical advantage. To further reduce this, I might take a rasp and I've warmed it up to make that a lot easier to do. So 
value on this shoe, I've increased with the web here, decreased it more on this side, and that would be up to the veterinarian's discretion on how serious or how well the collateral ligament injury is healing or what other issues the horse might have. It's simple to modify a standard aluminum shoe into a variety of shapes, and it benefits you by using some heat.